How do you use an A-B test duration calculator? If you have done any type of A-B testing, you must have heard that you need to calculate the A-B test sample size before you launch your A-B experiment. What does that mean? You need to decide how many people will go through your A-B experiment before you launch the A-B experiment. Now, there are a ton of A-B test duration calculators out there. For the purposes of this video, I am gonna show you the A-B test duration calculator available at FigBuy, but you can use any of the calculators out there. Hello everyone, this is Khaled with Invesp. This channel is all about helping you improve your site conversion rate so you can make more money online. Now, we do that by sharing the best strategies, tips, and tools on how to do that. If you are new to this channel, I'd love for you to join and subscribe. Of course, like and comment on this video. Let's Let's jump right in. Now, before we look at an A-B test duration calculator, there are a couple of things that I want to cover. Number one, why do I need to calculate the sample size before launching my A-B test? Remember that the goal from your A-B test is to measure the performance of the control versus the variations that are included in the experiment. What you will notice is that as you launch an A-B experiment, as your A-B testing software starts to collect data, visitors and conversions for the control and for the variations, the data is going to change. And there are different instances where the A-B testing software will tell you that you have hit significance. Now, if you don't understand what significance is when it comes to A-B testing, I've recorded a video on that. We will leave a comment for it in the description of this video. So as you are collecting data, you will notice that there are times where you hit significance. And if you leave the data and you will continue running the A-B test, the data is insignificant again. And that is the reason we calculate the sample size before we launch the A-B experiments. We input the data into our A-B test duration calculator, how many visitors will go through the test, how many variations we have, what kind of uplift we expect to have as a result of the test, what kind of significance or confidence or chance to win we aim at for this A-B experiment. The A-B test duration calculator will tell us that you need to run the test until at least maybe 30, maybe 40, maybe 50,000 visitors have gone through it. So it doesn't matter that you've hit significance prior to collecting all of the sample size that is required and that is determined prior to running the A-B test. You will wait until until you've hit that sample size and then you will evaluate your data and whether you have significant results or not. Now, it's also important to keep in mind that we want to run our A-B experiment anywhere between a week to four weeks. You might input your data into the A-B test duration calculator and you notice that the total time required to run the experiment might be six weeks, might be eight weeks, might be six months. And in that case, you want to go back and look at your parameters and say, you know what? Because this experiment is gonna take two months to conclude, I need to change the number of variables in the experiments. I might be willing to accept higher or lower confidence level. Again, the parameter that we are looking there is anywhere between one week to four weeks to running an A-B experiment. What if I input all of my parameters and discover that the A-B test duration calculator is telling me that it will only take a day or maybe a couple of hours to run the A-B experiment? Well, although statistics are telling you that yes, you can run the experiment for a couple of hours or a day, we will still continue running the experiment for at least a week because we want to collect data from visitors coming to our site, hitting the site at different days of the week because those visitors will probably shop a little bit different. A visitor who's coming to the site on a Tuesday is a lot different than a visitor who's coming to the site on maybe Saturday night. Now, with all of that, let's jump in and take a look at an A-B test duration calculator and its different parameters. Now, this is a standard calculator. I pulled the A-B test duration calculator from FigPi because I am a co-founder over there, but there are a ton of of A-B test duration calculators available on the web and they all perform the same way. Now, before we start taking a look at the example, let's notice the it's gonna ask you for the original conversion rate. This is not the site conversion rate, rather the conversion rate for the particular page that you are testing for the particular goal also of that test. So I might be running a test on the home page, and I wanna measure when I talk about the original conversion rate for those visitors who come to the home page, since that's the page I'm gonna be testing, how many of them are actually converting? How do you calculate that conversion rate? You can either use your analytics to figure out that conversion rate, or you can run an AA test, and that will tell you the original conversion rates 
comment below and I'll be glad to record a video about that. So it's going to ask you for the original conversion rates, how many average visitors to the page per day. So in this case, we said 3,500. That's kind of the standard value. How many variations I'm going to include in the test? What's the expected lifts? Now, lots of people struggle with this. This is what's called the minimum desirable effects. Do I expect my test to generate a 10%, 15%, 20%? This is a little bit counterintuitive because people sometimes, if you notice, this is 20% and tells you that the test is going to run for nine days. Now, let's just leave the data as is. And let's say we want to run the test with a minimum expected lift of 5%. Notice that now this number actually increased. There's a lot of statistical theory behind this. And people get confused. They're like, what 5% should run actually shorter than the 20%? No, that is not the case. Whenever you're running an A-B test, you're looking for a needle in a haystack. The bigger the needle, the faster or the easier it is to find it. That's the reason usually we are aiming for 15 or 20% expected lift. This is a Bayesian statistics. If you use a frequentist A-B testing platform, then you'll find uh, confidence over here. We usually aim for 95%. Sometimes if the site does not get enough conversions, I might reduce this to 90%. Let's take a look at this. So this particular page gets 3,500 visitors. So let's figure out how many monthly visitors this particular page that we are testing gets. So I'm just going to open up my calculator, my trusty calculator, 3,500 and multiply that by 30 days. So in a month, they're getting this particular page is getting 100 and 5,000 visitors. How many conversions does this site generate? It's three and a half percent conversion rate. So multiply that by 3.5 and then divided by 100. And if you notice, this particular page is generating 3,600 conversions per month at three variations, 20% lifts, concluding the test in nine days. Remember, we want to see the number over here not to exceed 30 days. If we exceed 30 days, then we have a problem. Okay, so now let's jump into an example where this site generates less than 200 conversions conversions per month. And let's see the impact on the number of days. And again, the rule for us over here is we want to run the A-B test where it does not exceed 31 days. So in this case, let's say we have a site that generates 30,000 visitors a month. So that's a thousand. And let's say that the conversion rate is half a percent. You think about it, half a percent at 30,000, that's 150 conversions. And let's pull up our trusty calculator and see how that looks. So a thousand visitors multiply by 30, that's 30,000. Multiply that by 0.5 and divide that by 100. So we got 150 conversions. So notice in this case, a half a percent conversion rate, a thousand visitors a day, two variations, 20% expected lift, 95%. It's going to take us 238 days. And that's the reason 200 conversions, in this case, is even less. It's 150 conversions. It's really tough to run an A-B test. So my first thing to do is I'm going to say, you know what? In this case, let's just reduce it to two. Right away, it dropped to 159. Now, again, 159. We're talking almost six months, five months and 10 days. So I can run A-B testing, but if I'm going to wait for a test for 159 days, you're going to hate A-B testing. So maybe I am willing to actually be a little bit flexible and I might be willing to go down to 90%. 89 days. Is it great? No, it's still two months. What if I am willing to reduce it to 80% chance to beat control? 49 days at 150 conversions. That's where it gets tricky. Now, Let's change it where we cross that 200 threshold. Right now we are at 0.5. Let's say our conversion rate is 0.7. Notice how it's going to take us 35 days. Now, let's take another example where we actually jump to, let's say, 300 conversions. So that's 1% conversion rates is 20 four days. Well, we'll say, you know what? We are going to go with 85%. So, okay, this is great. So in this case, if we want to show just the math quickly, we have 30,000 visitors multiplied by 1%, which is one. So it's going to be 30,000 divided by hundred. So in this case, we have 300 conversions. You see how things, the more conversions you're getting, and that's reason I always focus on conversions. I didn't talk about the number of visitors, correct? That's where I get more flexibility. Let's say that we're getting one and a half quickly. How many conversions is that? I can do the math 
math quickly, then I'll pull up the calculator. That's about 450 conversions. Let's take a look at the math over here. So it's 30,000 visitors multiplied by 1.5 divided by 100. Again, that's 450 conversions. And notice it's taken us 23 days. So I'm going to be a little bit more strict. Now, even with the 90% chance to beat control, things are a little bit more comfortable with 450 conversions. There's different ways to play with this. Again, what I'm focused on is the number of conversions. Let's double the number of visitors. In this case, I'm getting 60,000 visitors. That's one and a half percent. That is giving me almost 900 conversions. Let's do the math quickly over here. 2,000 visitors a day, 60,000 visitors, correct? One and a half conversion rate multiplied by 1.5, then divide that by 100. And look at this, it's 900 conversions. Now it's taken us 14 days to conclude the test. So I'm going to go to 95% confidence, 26 days. I might even say, you know what? I am willing to accept the chance to beat control of 90%, but I'm going to introduce another variation. I still now have 22 days to conclude the test. So you see the flexibility that you get. Let's jump in where you have 2000 conversions per month. So 2000 conversions, I might just increase that to 4000. And then let's do 2%. It's a little bit more than 2000 conversions. Let's do the math over here. It is a bit more than 2000 conversions per month, 4000 daily. So that's 120,000 visitors. Multiple Apply that by 2%, divide that by 100, and that gives us 2,400 conversions per month. Notice I have three variations with an expected conversion rate lift of 20%, and I'm going to be actually at 95. It's 14 days to conclude. That's the reason I will say crossing the 2,000 conversions per month, that's where magic happens. What you want to do is pull up this A-B test duration calculator, keep an eye on the number of days it's going to take you to conclude the test, and then plug in your numbers. But know that at more than 500 conversions, things get easy. More than 1,000, it gets easier. With 2,000, 2,400 conversions per day in this example, things are just absolutely magical. It's taken us 14 days to conclude the test. It just looks absolutely wonderful. I'm going to leave a link to this duration calculator in the description below as well.